Senator Kennedy, President Johnson said yesterday he was pleased that congressional dissent from his Vietnam policy was so minimal. As one of the leading dissenters, would you agree your differences with the president on his Vietnam policy can be dismissed as being so minimal and so insignificant? Well, I don't know if I how I exactly I would describe them. I think that there is perhaps uh, some differences in emphasis. But I think uh, he's right in saying that our general objectives and uh, what we want to accomplish in Vietnam and Southeast Asia are identical. Live from CBS Washington, Face the Nation, a spontaneous and unrehearsed news interview with Senator Robert Kennedy, Democrat of New York. Senator Kennedy will be questioned by CBS News diplomatic correspondent Marvin Kalb, E.W. Kenworthy of the Washington Bureau of the New York Times. CBS News correspondent Martin Nagronsky will lead the questioning. We shall resume the interview with Senator Kennedy in just a moment. Senator Kennedy, there's been an enormous amount of confusion and talk about the differences between you and the president on Vietnam policy that you now say are minimal and only a difference in emphasis. Can you uh, spell out what those differences in emphasis are? Well, I could spell out, if you'd like, what my own position is and what I understand the present administration's position is. Go ahead, sir. Uh, first, uh, uh, I think that the, we're both interested in trying to find a peaceful solution to the problem and the struggle in Vietnam. I think both of us agree, the administration and myself, and I think backed by the vast majority of Americans feel that we cannot pull out of Vietnam, that our military power is necessary there, that the Viet Cong and the communists must understand that they are not going to defeat us in the field and that the, we are, there is not going to be any abject surrender on the part of the United States. So we're in favor of that military effort. I think uh, President Johnson has made it clear that we are interested in a negotiated settlement. Now, how the negotiations are going to come about, what's going to take place. I have said uh, that I think first the National Liberation Front, the Viet Cong, should be represented at the negotiating table. Uh, Secretary Rusk has said that uh, this is not an insurmountable problem, and uh, I think that another official of the State Department has said that, in fact, this could be accepted. Second, uh, we have both agreed that we are going to, the administration, and I suggested it and talked about it in my speech last Saturday, that, uh, that if a Vietnamese make a decision that they want, uh, or that they're going to be communists in the government, or dissidents in the government, or those who are opposed to the present government. If there are free elections within Vietnam, that might very well come about. The initial reaction of the administration was opposed to that, but the administration has made it clear through Bill Moyers and others that they will abide by free elections, and if the country, some of the people decide that some of these dissident elements, those who are presently our adversaries, should be represented within the government, they shall be so represented. Then in the interim period of time between the final government and the initial discussions. There might be a government that's established within Vietnam, which I would feel would be under international guarantees. I have said that we have to make it clear for the final government and during the interim period of time that we are asking the Viet Cong and the communists to come to the negotiating table, not just to surrender, but that we uh, want them to make concessions and we in turn are willing to make concessions. If they are willing to make the kinds of concessions that we'd like to have made, to come under the control of the central government, to open up the areas that they now control to uh, government forces, the t territory, and to return the people that they now control to the central government, that we in turn would see that they played a role in the processes of the government, whether it's in the interim period of time or in the final period of time, based on their support. Amen. Senator, if we may pursue a little more closely this question of objectives, leaving aside for the moment how you would achieve them, do you consider the administration's policy is designed, either by military means or negotiations, to produce a non-communist South Vietnam? And if so, assuming that it is a desirable goal, do you think it is a realistic goal? And if the costs of achieving it are too high, how would you scale down the administration's goal? Well, first, I think it's the ideal of all of us. I think that what we'd r most like to have in Vietnam is a non-communist Vietnam. And I think that what uh, is uh, an objective that cannot be surrendered under any circumstances is, this, is turning the people of South Vietnam either over to North Vietnam or over to the communists. That's what we're fighting for. 
But I think that we are also made it clear that we want in negotiations, we want discussions. We're going to continue our military effort to try to force the communists to understand that they are not going to defeat us. But at the same time, we can have these negotiations and these discussions at, uh, I hope, at uh, the earliest possible time, in which case that the communists uh, can share in the uh, uh, future of their country. I think that what we have is the three alternatives within Vietnam. We can either uh, turn the government and the country over to the, those who are opposed, who are our adversaries at the present time, which I'm opposed to doing. We can defeat them and destroy them, or we can negotiate with them. I think our present policy is to negotiate with them. I tried to bring out this past week what some of the dangers of that are and what some of the steps that we have to take in order to accomplish that. Now, I think that our policy is to, uh, to uh, have a negotiated peace. If we have a negotiated peace, being realistic and being honest and being candid with ourselves, we must understand that uh, the communists or those who are opposed to us might end up in some way or another within the governmental structure of Vietnam, either in the interim period or the final period of time. If we don't decide that, if, we're, if our policy is something different, then uh, we can't uh, really expect them that they will come to the negotiating table unless we completely defeat them. Now, I think that that's difficult uh, at the present time. President Key has said to Secretary McNamara that his government controls only 25 percent of the people within Vietnam, that their territory that they control is even less than that. So if you're going to expect them to come to the negotiating table, we are going to ask for concessions from them, important concessions, laying down their arms, some of these other matters. We in turn have to be able and willing to deal realistically with them. I'm not in favor of telling them in, in advance, as I made it clear, that they have this role within government, that we give it to them automatically. What I'm in favor of saying is, if you come in and you make the kinds of concessions that we want, you in turn will be brought into the political structure of Vietnam. And I don't think that there is any other solution if, unless we want a partition of the country, if in fact we want negotiations. So uh, that's why I was somewhat surprised, really, at the reaction. Well, Senator, I think there are two stages uh, that we're talking about. One is the negotiation itself. The other is the free elections that we hope will follow negotiations. Yes. On the first point, uh, you say that you would uh, like to have the National Liberation Front represented, and the administration has said that this is not an insurmountable obstacle. The administration has also said that there is no problem if, as a result of free elections, the communists do partake in some kind of government. Initially, uh, initially that wasn't their reaction. I think subsequently that was. Yeah, well, this, um, I think I'm trying to understand, a lot of people are still somewhat confused as to what happens in between. Uh, the administration has never said whether it would agree as a result of the negotiation to a coalition government, only as a result of a free election to the incorporation of communism. Now, government. That, again, uh, the, Mr. Moyer said on Tuesday afternoon, as it was reported in the newspapers and as it was reported to me at my press conference on Tuesday, which led me to say that we weren't far apart, he said that this matter on the question of the dissident participation or communist participation in this interim government was a subject to negotiation which is basically what I am saying. So when you ask the differences between myself and the administration, I've seen other spokesmen of the administration take a different position or point of view on this matter. But from what Mr. Moyer said on Tuesday afternoon, which was reported in the New York Times, the New York Herald Tribune, and others, I think that we are close together. What I, would, what I think is important, uh, we are a mature country, and we are, uh, we are talking about the, this gray problem that's disturbed so many of our people, I think we have to be honest with ourselves. And I don't think that we avoid dangers by putting our head in the sand and acting as if they do not exist. These are dangers. These are problems. But uh, if we are, in fact, interested in negotiations, this is obviously something that's going to be discussed at the negotiating table. Because you're not going to expect that these, our adversaries are going to come in to the negotiating table, turn over, tur lay down their arms, turn over the areas and the manpower that they control without having some future say in the political life of Vietnam. Senator. Senator. Well, Senator, just to follow this thing up, um, it could very well be that the administration has told you something that it might not have told a great many other people, but I don't think it's clear at all that as a result of negotiations, 
the administration would be prepared to see dissident communist elements well, in just, the government. I, they didn't tell, uh, well, it, Mr. Moyes mentioned to me on the phone, but it was reported in the, in the New York Times and the Herald Tribune on Wednesday morning. Is that your understanding of the administration's position? Well, that was what it was reported. It's my understanding as the representative of the White House, and uh, Mr. Kenworthy is here today, and he was president of that news conference. Senator, let's address ourselves to now, another... Let me just say that I, there have been other positions taken on the same question by other representatives of the administration. But if M Mr. Moyers uh, speaks for the White House, and therefore speaks, I think, in a realistic way, this is their position. Now, uh, I, that's, I, I can only speak uh, from what I read by you journalists. Senator, you would certainly feel that the Vice President of the United States would speak for the White House, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Okay. <laughs> now, Vice President Humphrey, remarking <coughs> reacting to your to your uh, proposal said that it would be bringing the Viet Cong into a coalition government like bringing the fox into the chicken coop now do you feel that by his statement assuming as you do that he speaks for the White House that he forecloses any possibility of a successful negotiation with the Viet Cong because if they accept this as a White House position then <clears throat> they must naturally assume at that point that we would never want them in a coalition government and would not permit them in such a government. Well, I, I think that really that question should be addressed to uh, Vice President Humphrey. I think that, as I said, there I don't see that there's that great difference between my own position and the position that's been enunciated by the administration for the administration by Mr. Moyers. I but went you, you on to say... You can't separate the Vice President from the administration. No, I would think that I, perhaps I'm closer to... Uh, Mr. Moyers and I are closer together than perhaps some of the other spokesmen are to, uh, to one another. Or are but you indicating that the vice president would have made such a statement independently? You don't think he I, reflects I, the president's position? I think, as I say, that uh, those questions, rather than be addressed to me, uh, would have to be addressed to those who made the statements. Well, let's address you. <clears throat> can we have you address yourself to this question? Do you think that your position and that of the vice president are at odds or completely separate? Well, from some of the statements that I read in the paper, I gather there is not complete agreement, speaking rather candidly. I don't think that there is, but uh, uh, I would say that my position is, uh, would appear to be closer to Mr. Moyer's position than some of these other spokesmen that you've mentioned. Well, but uh, uh, again, I think that the, imp the important point is really that we do determine our policy at the... At the, uh, at the federal level, that we decide what we want to accomplish, whether we are interested in negotiations. And uh, I think the negotiations and having the communists within government, I'm not sure it would end up, for instance, in a coalition government. I mean, I, it could end up with some international control. It could end up with them playing some role of one kind or another. But I think that we should have clear in our own mind that they are going to play some role in the political processes of that country. And uh, if we take you mentioned one spokesman, but if we take some of the other spokesmen as well as the one you mentioned and bring it through uh, to a rational conclusion, even if they win elections, we're not going to permit them to play a role in government. And that doesn't, to me, sound very realistic. I think that the... Well, that is your difference, then, with the administration. Well, I am not, not different. As I say, if we t talk about difference with the administration, if I look at what Mr. Moyer said as spokesman for the White House, I don't see that there is that difference. I well, mean, if you look at what the Under Secretary of State George Ball said, or what the Secretary of State said, or what the Vice President said, then is there a difference? Well, then I think that you'd have to get them in and find out what is the administration's position on con connection with any particular one of these matters. I've traced it through as well as I can. I've traced it through to indicate what I think is required in order to obtain peaceful or peaceful solution to the war in Vietnam. Now, because there are conflicting statements made by others in connection with the same matter. Really, I don't think that I'm in a position to straighten that out. I think you have to really go to them. But, Senator, there's a, on these differences, or apparent differences, between you and Mr. Humphrey, there's great relevance for the achievement of, of the objectives. For example, as you very well know, the critics within the Senate are being charged with creating a sense of, of disunity which might encourage the communists to stay away from the negotiations. But there are others who think that Mr. Humphrey's statement, by apparently foreclosing uh, any participation, 
really encourages them to to pursue the war because they have no alternative. Now, did you consider those things before you made your statement? I considered the fact, uh, basically, the fact that uh, I didn't think that uh, at that to that time that it had been realistically <coughs> and candidly discussed uh, in uh, the newspapers or in public about uh, the. Uh, negotiations, how we were going to accomplish negotiations. As I said, I think there were two ways. Number one, the use of military power against the Viet Cong and the Communists to show them that they could not defeat us. And secondly, if we really were interested in negotiation, uh, holding the door open to them that if they come in and make concessions, if they behave themselves, then we will uh, negotiate with them in good faith. Now, I think statements that are made that we will never deal with assassins and we will never deal with murderers uh, makes it difficult for them to believe that they are being asked to come to the negotiating table other than to surrender. So I recognize that that poses difficulties and problems. But I think as to the, con the conflict between what one spokesman says and another spokesman says within the executive branch of the government, how that can be, how, how they can straighten that out really should be addressed to them rather than to me. I make my Senator. position, if I may say so, I've made myself position very clear I will answer any questions regarding my own position. My position today is the same as my position was Saturday and the same as my position was all last week. Senator, I don't have any problem about let's that. Let's address ourselves exclusively to your position. Let's forget everything that was said in the past. I'm told by those close to the president, and I'm sure that you're aware of this, that often when he speaks to those who visit him in the White House on Vietnam, he says to them, if you think there's anything wrong with our policy in Vietnam, what is your alternative? What is your alternative? Well, <clears throat> it's not an alternative to policy. It's an alternative, it's, it's some s an effort to try to first to discuss carrying out this policy, how we can best accomplish the policy. Now, I understand the policy is to use military power and force within Vietnam to indicate that we are not going to surrender, I'm in favor of that. I'm in favor of the negotiations or the effort to have negotiations, the peace offensive, I was in favor of that. I am <coughs> in favor of making it clear to the communists and to the Viet Cong that if they come to the negotiating table, that we are not asking them just to surrender. I didn't, I is, had is, not is felt, that, could I just ask, one? I hadn't felt that that had been stressed enough, either in our own minds, in the public's minds, and in the Senate of the United States when we had the debate, or perhaps at the, uh, at the level of the executive branch of the government. So I focused attention on that. Now, Mr. Moyer said that there's no problem about that, and it's subject to negotiations, and we will by, abide by elections. Then, then there is nothing that you would do that the administration is not doing. Is that what we're coming to now? Well, uh, I, as I say, I would, pre I would stress the, uh, the, f the fact that if we have negotiations, that we are asking the Viet Cong to come in to do something other than to surrender. <clears throat> now, whether that's been done, whether over the period, for instance, of the last week, by the statements that you've repeated here and statements by various spokesmen in the administration, that's become somewhat confused uh, as to what we really want from the Viet Cong, what we really want from the communists, what we want to establish. I think that that, uh, some validity in that. But <coughs> I've stated and my own point of view, and I think uh, some validity in the... In, in Senator but I've made my own position, and, <coughs> in and as I say, I think that in connection with what Mr. Moyer said, that it's quite cl they're quite close together. Senator, you uh, spent a, a considerable amount of time talking with some experts on communist China before you, you made your statement. Uh, could you tell us what was the consensus of those experts on the risk of... Uh, uh, entry into the war by Communist China? Well, I think it's first, it's very clear that Communist China uh, is not interested in having Hanoi have any kind of negotiations. So that if <coughs> Hanoi, in fact, or the National Liberation Front comes to the negotiating table, they do cut off, to some extent, their relationship with China. So I think, again, they have to understand that they can come out of this with something that's reasonable. As far as uh, China is concerned, itself being involved, I think the general opinion was that if the war continues to escalate, that over a period of the next uh, 12 months that China will be more, far more actively involved than she is at the present time. I think we should understand that China at the present time is 20,000 
people within uh, v North Vietnam who are working actively on the war effort, that they've constructed four or five airports that are on the border of uh, North Vietnam, which, uh, like <coughs> which, uh, which should probably be used as air cover or could be used for air cover of North Vietnam. Senator, there are many more things we'd like to ask you, and we'll resume the questioning in a moment. Senator, we know that there is growing concern, and I know how aware you are of it, in the Senate that the language of the Supplemental Defense Bill for Vietnam may, like the Tonkin Gulf Resolution of 1964, about which there is so much dispute, give the president an open-ended authority to, expend, to expand the war, if he wishes, into Laos and Thailand. Now, are you concerned about that and what can be done well, about it? I'm concerned, what are you doing as everybody it? is, about the fact that the war might escalate. Uh, I'm concerned about the, uh, the fact that uh, the war already has caused considerable casualties within the United States. I'm concerned about protecting our own interest as well as our relationship with Vietnam. And I'm Obviously, we need a relationship, a close association with President Key, but we have our own national interests that we have to protect, and the sacrifices that are being made by the United States and the people. I'm concerned uh, that, uh, that, this, that, that the war escalates, that uh, it could broaden and uh, involve uh, China. I don't believe, in connection with the specific language in uh, that particular uh, bill, legislation, that that adds to the authority that already exists in the hands of the you president. You are not concerned about that? Not that, because I think that the President of the United States has under the Constitution already the authority to deal with these kind of problems in the way that he is. I don't think it, for instance, the Tonkin Resolution or the language in the appropriate Supplemental Appropriation Bill adds anything to the authority that he has at the present time. Senator, while it doesn't add anything to the authority that the President has, either the Formosa Resolution or the Tonkin Gulf Resolution or the Middle East Resolution, Certainly, uh, um, President Johnson has used the Tonkin Gulf Resolution uh, to every uh, critic that approaches him, saying that this gives him um, prior uh, approval for any necessary steps. I understand that. Well, do you think that the language of this bill can be used in the same way? Then he'll have to. I do not think so, uh, but uh, it's not my belief that it can be used in that way. And I think that he's seen, and uh, quite clearly, as everybody else has, that there is genuine concern, the support for the administration's policy, but there's also genuine concern about uh, the future of the war in Vietnam and in our relationships uh, with China and the effect the war is going to have on our own people and our own programs here in the United States. Well, Senator, wasn't the intent of the small and secret meeting that was held yesterday in the Senate in which you participated with a small group of senators to, um, wasn't their whole concern the language of this bill? and the thrust that we've just uh, talked about? No, uh, well, not really the language of the bill, quite frankly, but uh, on the point that was just made about the fact that uh, uh, whether any other resolution was going to be offered, which uh, might, uh, in fact, uh, indicate that, uh, that uh, a support of the, a widening of the war in Vietnam. Do you think that will be uh, offered, that resolution? That I just do not know. Will there be a meeting tomorrow on this? Well, I don't think, I think that there are resolutions that are being thought of or by others that uh, perhaps would uh, indicate to the uh, president that the, there was a sense of the Senate that the war perhaps should be widened, and I think there was concern about how to deal with that problem. That the war should not be widened? No, that it should be widened. That it should be widened. Yes. Well, I'm sorry, gentlemen, our time is up. I wish we could continue. Thank you, Senator Kennedy, for being here to face the nation. A concluding message in a moment. Today on Face the Nation, Senator Robert Kennedy, Democrat of New York, was interviewed by CBS News diplomatic correspondent Marvin Kalb, E.W. Kenworthy of the Washington Bureau of the New York Times. CBS News correspondent Martin Nagronsky led the questioning. Next week, another prominent figure in the news will face the nation. Face the Nation was broadcast live from CBS Washington.